Well, I'm Mike Jones, pastor of Memorial Baptist Church. And I'm Danny Smith. And you're watching Casual Convo with Mike and Danny. And the point of what we're doing is to stimulate intelligent conversation about faith, about the Bible, about God, things that maybe you always wondered. Uh, maybe you've heard somebody say something and, and you're like, how does God speak? Or what is this faith that you have? And why do you seem to be happy and all these things? We're trying to stimulate conversation so that you might find some answers, at least know where to go looking for your answers. And that's what my goal is. Uh, when you get around the water cooler, the coffee pot, you say, hey, have you guys watched Casual Convo with Mike and Danny? It's on the internet. Man, they had a good discussion this last time. And maybe you need to check it out, whatever it takes. And by the way, if you are watching and you have a question, please l notify us. You can contact us on the website that you're viewing this. And we'll be glad to include it in our list of questions we get so that we can maybe perhaps answer what's gnawing at you uh, about God. So before we begin, I want to ask Danny to open us in prayer. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We lift you up. Thank you, O Lord, for this challenge. And this is challenging at times that we can share our faith with other people, that they can ask those questions of us, and that we will look into these things so that we might have a greater understanding yes. of you and what you want from us, our lives, and our ministry. Bless us. Make your Holy Spirit to descend upon us in each and every one of these convos. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today's question, it was we don't get our questions until like one minute before we start. So we really <laughs> don't have time to prepare for these questions. And I'm sure some questions will come in at some point that we're going to have to really look into you know, there are some profound questions out there. I'm not God. I don't know it all. I never will be, and I never will know it all. So, um, but it's an interesting question. How do I learn to look through my circumstances and see God's face shining on me? What do you got, Mike? Well, circumstances, um, some circumstances are stuff that we've done to ourselves. <laughs> I, I call them uh, the bonehead decisions we make sometimes. Self-inflicted uh, God, Yes, self-inflicted. And sometimes we make just a bad decision. And the circumstances surrounding that bad decision were like, okay, how did I get here? And then there are some circumstances that happen because other people have made bonehead decisions and all of a sudden you're a victim of their decisions well you're like but hey i didn't do that i didn't choose that and there's a lot of things we don't choose but we have a sovereign god that works through all circumstances good the bad the ugly uh and he already knows what's going on i mean he knows beginning middle and end of everything and because he's above time he created time He's not involved directly in time, although he intercedes through time and from time to time. I like using the word time. But God has these circumstances, and sometimes they're orchestrated by God to guide us into a place where we have to trust him. We can't trust anything else or anyone else. And I've seen that in my own life where I've been going along, things are going really great, and all of a sudden I hit this brick wall. And I'm thinking, what have I done wrong? You know, and I think a lot of people ask that because sometimes we think if I'm doing everything right, my life should be easy, right? So why am I hitting these brick walls? Why am I going through these hard times? Why are why are people getting sick? Why did I get sick? You know, why did I have this or that? There is no short answer, but we do have a God that says, I am. I am, which means he is present with us in every circumstance. And there is a purpose. There is a rhyme and a reason whether or not it's something we did to ourselves or someone else involved us in. He has got a plan and a purpose. And we may not always see it. In fact, we usually don't see it right away. It's when we look back. Looking back, we can say, you know, now I understand why I went through that. Now I know why that event took place in my life. 
And we call those spiritual markers. We can look back and say, there was God in the middle of that. And I didn't recognize it at first, but I can go back and see God was right there. He helped me through that difficult time. He helped me through that loss. He helped me through that examination. And now I see that I'm stronger. I'm better because of that. Um, What's your take on all that? Well, I mean, yeah, I think that the question really comes out of the Aaronic Blessing, and it's made me want to go back and study the Aaronic Blessing and actually uh, memorize that. I went to a um, a Sabbath Hebrew Bible study for Messianic uh, Christians for a little over a year, um, and they would recite that actually in Hebrew. But I want to, I really want to do a a, a study on that. Um, I know that the trials and tribulations and hitting that wall, I mean, I've been basically walking with God for 33 years since he delivered me uh, from drugs and alcohol. And to this day, he's still delivering me from myself. Um, And therein lies the problem. You know, people say, what were you saved from? And my instant reaction is to say, I was saved from myself. Um, So I I, I look at that question and I look back at all the times he's extricated me from the bonehead decisions that I that, that I've made or he's extricated me from from situations that weren't my fault where I had to endure the consequences of somebody else's sin that that and, and bonehead decisions that affected me and I think that God builds uh, he, he places these building blocks in our soul and we can look back and he, he extricated me out of this he extricated me out of that listen he's still there for me and and I think in our human frailty and weakness, sometimes, you know, we still fall into that, oh, God, how am I going to get through this one? Mm-hmm. But that's, 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 that's a foolish attitude. But when we have a track record to build on that he's built, you know, inside of us, not, nothing that I can take credit for, I think that's where it just becomes a little bit easier and our faith becomes stronger and it becomes bolder. Um, it's a it's it's a great question. I think you know he he promises I will never leave you or forsake you. Right. And he has not, and he will not. And as long as we don't inculcate, if you will, uh, these things upon ourselves, we're you know he promised us trials and tribulations. He promised us persecution, and we're seeing that, you know, in in spades, really growing today, even in this country with what's going on politically. But you look, you know, you look at when a Jew uh, comes to Christ, uh, they're disowned by their family, and, mm-hmm. and, and their family inheritance is gone. In many, many cases, they're they're ostracized. Even though, thank God, you know, they are coming to terms with who Yeshua is, mm-hmm. and the name Yeshua means the salvation of Yehovah, and that is growing in Israel. Think about a Muslim. You know, and all they give up and risk when they come to Christ. Exactly. Or the Chinese. You know, the church is growing in Iran, uh, and God is st- in, and in China, and God is still sh- shining His face and blessing these people in the most adverse of, si- uh, of situations. So, um, <clears throat> I think it's a matter of not losing faith learning how to cry out to God, staying in his precious word, right. and filling your time, your mind, and everything you do around him, and not so much the things of the world. And that's something that I've been struggling with, you know. I mean, how many more things do I need, you know? How much <laughs> time do I need to spend on YouTube? How much time do I need to, you know, spend with my face stuck in that phone? And God's really been convicting me about that, and not only me, but a lot of Christians that where our blessings really are, are spending that time in his presence so he can change those but things. Watch that. We are on YouTube, so we want people to watch. Well, we want, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but that's not, you know, I watch guitars and motorcycles and all well, yeah, kinds of frivolous yeah. nonsense, you know. And if I would just spend more time in his word and in his presence, yeah, it's, it's great to watch us or somebody else on YouTube that's going to be a positive Christian influence in our lives, but there is no substitute. I agree. For growing calluses on your knees and spending time in God's Word. I agree. In fact, you mentioned the the Aaronic blessing, and I don't know how many people may even know what that is. But it comes in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, and this is the New Living Translation version of it. And this is what God had told Moses to tell Aaron, how he and his sons and, and all the high priests after that were to bless the people. 
May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Shalom. Shalom. That was a blessing that the high priest was supposed to give to the people before they dismissed them. So they, they felt that, hey, you've been blessed by God in a mighty way. You may not realize it, but he's always going to be there. And, and what you said is so true. Um, because I have been in those situations where I've, I've talked with people from other faiths that said, you don't understand. I mean, a Muslim man I, I, I worked with uh, in Turkey, he, he said, Mike, you don't understand what it's like if I were to convert to Christianity. He said, when you, you are from America, you go back, they don't put you in jail. They don't beat you up. Your family doesn't disown you. You don't yeah. suddenly have nothing. And, and there's no social services. There's no safety net. There's nothing. You don't know what it's like to be hunted, beaten, and even targeted to be killed as an otter killing. You don't know what that's even like. And I looked at him and I said, Halil, I don't. You're right. I don't know what that means. However, you have been exposed to the truth. And you will stand before a holy, righteous, and just God who will hold you accountable for what you know. Yeah, which makes me shudder in my boots as an American because, I mean, here we are with all the freedoms and the benefits. And I, I didn't grow up in this country. I lived in Southeast Asia and Central America. Um, you know, and, and I've seen things, even as a young child, that no young child should, should have to see. Um, what account are we going to give when yeah. we stand before God? You know, it's it's it, it's like the wicked the the parable of the wicked ser servant and the talents. Are we going to you know take this great gift and shamelessly and boldly share it with other people, which is our responsibility, mm -hmm. and let the Holy Spirit and God the Father and the Son do their job as to right. whether that person is going to accept or reject their Creator, accept or reject their savior, I mean, we're going to be held accountable for that. Right. And that scares me. That scares me because the end of that parable doesn't end well. But I know that fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but there's another side to that coin, and that is, is there's great blessing in obedience and, and in wisdom. And, and the Bible tells us if we ask, you know, ask for wisdom and I will liberally give it to you. So I think that uh, we, we, in this country, as a church, we failed miserably, and we have our priorities backward. You know, we're built. Are we building a church? Are we building a denomination? Yeah. Or are we building the kingdom? Well, directing it back to the original question, and I think we kind of drifted a little bit. It's I drifted. Yeah, we all we both did. But, <laughs> but yeah, you kind of pulled us into different. But I'll do that. Yeah, that's all right, because um, that might spark another question from somebody down the road. But the idea is when we're in a circumstance, how do we see God in that? And like I said, sometimes we don't. But that's where we have to trust God's word that God said, like you, you already repeated that, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He promises to go through the fire, to go through the flood. He promises to take us through all those circumstances, but he doesn't make us go through it alone. He goes through it with us. Correct. And so it's a matter of, and this goes back to our faith, our confidence, our trust in what we can't see, can't feel. We have to trust that this God who promised this is going to be honoring his promise. Yeah. And I think that when it seems the darkest to us and we do that and we utterly trust in him, I think that's when his light shines through the greatest. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, the, uh, the circumstance, think about a circumstance that you faced that maybe you didn't see the face of God in. Um, probably some of the temptations that I've had to endure, uh, and yet the Lord took me, uh, to several, I mean, he gave me the scriptures, and I and I need to memorize them actually. But that um, it was a, it, he 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 can't tempt us. No. But no. it was after our own lust that I think that he brought to the surface 
But he said, I want to get rid of these things in you. Because he sees things in us that we can't even see in ourselves. And um, methodically, uh, he has removed those things from my life. I honestly believe that if, if God showed us the depths of our, wretched, our, our, our wretchedness as human beings, we would all at once we, we, we would die. We couldn't right. handle it. Agreed. And so through the years, God has continually shined had his face shine upon me Um, and uh, he has worked out all of these things for his glory and for his purposes Um, and you're right he'll never leave me he'll never forsake i i a recent for me a recent episode uh was when i was between pastorates um i had gotten hurt i mean i'd gotten really hurt by a church and uh, I actually questioned whether or not I should even be in ministry because it was very painful. And then God put me, I caught on the backside of the desert. And I was doing a job that didn't even require a high school diploma. And here I am with a master's degree that, that I earned and paid for. And I'm like, Lord, why am I doing this? And he said, because you have some things to learn. Amen. And through those four years... I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the things in me. Like you said, he puts us through that crucible and heats us up, draws out the impurities. And the idea of of the silversmith is he can look in and see his perfect reflection in the ore. And when he can see his perfect reflection, then all the impurities are out of the way. And I think God was trying to pull all that stuff out of me so he could look and see himself in me. And I have to say, I am a much different person than I was 10 years ago. But his face shined upon you the whole, the whole time. Absolutely. And there were times I didn't know it. Yep. All right. I think we're about out of time on this one. I do thank you for uh, sticking with us. And again, if you have questions, please contact us on the website that you're using uh, and tell your friends about us. I mean, this is important. Share. Like us. Share us with your friends. Um, that tell everybody you know uh, about what we've been talking about and see if it sparks an interest in them for some questions they might have. Uh, one of my greatest challenges is for someone to ask me a question that I don't know an answer to, which are going to be quite a few of those. I've had a few. And my straight answer, and I've learned this a long time ago, is I may not know it, but I'm going to look for it, and I'll get back with you with it. And listen, if you're looking for a church family, God is really beginning to move in this little church and and in the lives of each individual here in this church. And uh, we'd really like you to be a part of our family. Come and visit us. Come and see what's going on here. We've got some really good things going on. And if you're either tired of church as usual or you haven't been going to church and you're looking for a church family, come and see us. We'd love to have you. Everybody is welcome. All right, well, let's close in prayer. Father, I want to thank you again for your love, mercy, and for Jesus, for his love for us, the fact that he went to the cross for us to pay the penalty we deserved but couldn't pay for ourselves. And so I pray for those that are watching that you would spark in them an interest to go deeper into your word, deeper into who you are, and that their lives would begin to reflect the image of Jesus. For it's in his precious, holy, and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen.